Hello everyone. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We are Tom and Melissa, and we're here today to make an old favorite. If you're like me, you grew up eating shake and bake chicken and shake and bake pork chops. If you're like Melissa, you probably didn't. Melissa says she doesn't remember her mom ever using shake and bake, but my parents used it quite often. Today we're making a coating to go on some boneless, skinless chicken breast that will remind you very much of shake and bake. This is a really nice recipe to keep on hand. You can actually double, triple, quadruple this recipe and store it in a glass canning jar with a lid in your refrigerator and just take out what you need to coat chicken and bake it at the last minute and it can be a really fast, delicious meal. Better than shake and bake because no preservatives. That's exactly right. You know what's going in this and we're not always sure what we're getting in things we buy at the store. So let's put this together as we go. Now, the first thing you're gonna need is like a, a Ziploc bag. I'm using a one gallon Ziploc bag today that we're gonna put everything in to mix it together. And I'm just going to do this as we go. So the first thing you're going to need is some breadcrumbs. Now I have Progresso plain breadcrumbs, but if you have Italian style or whatever, there, there are several different kinds, you can use those. I just happen to have plain today, so that's what I'm using. So we're doing two cups of breadcrumbs. And you know, I'm not real particular about making sure it's exactly even at the top. I just kind of measure them out. It's not that big of a deal, really. All right, the second thing you're going to need is some sea salt. Now we're going to use two teaspoons of sea salt. If you don't have sea salt, you can use one teaspoon of table salt. It will taste pretty much the exact same, but if you have sea salt, use a couple teaspoons of that. Then we need one teaspoon of sugar. Yeah, you really need that sugar because you want to caramelize this coating on your chicken while it's baking. And that sugar will kind of melt and caramelize and it just makes it delicious. Now you're also going to need one teaspoon of paprika. So let's put that in. And when I do these spices, I am a little more careful to get them even. But the truth is, if you get a little more of something in there, it's not going to hurt anything. It's still delicious. And this is all to taste anyway. Our next ingredient is one teaspoon of onion powder. Now this is not a salt. This is onion powder. You've already put salt in there. And this is garlic salt or garlic powder. Do not use garlic salt. You've already put salt in there. If you use garlic salt, it's going to be way too salty. So a teaspoon of garlic powder. All right, our next ingredient is basil leaves. And you need one teaspoon of that. So let's just get a good teaspoon and put those in. I know this is a lot of ingredients, but honestly, everything here is something you should probably already have in your pantry. Next, we're doing oregano. And it is one teaspoon, like most everything else we've put in. If you don't have these ingredients in your pantry, you should go get them and keep it. Now, I like one teaspoon of sage in mine. This is totally optional. I know there are people who do not like sage, but I love it. When we do Thanksgiving dinner and I'm making our dressing, I pretty much use a whole box, sometimes more than a whole box. So we really do like sage and I'm putting it in. If you don't like sage, and I know there are a lot of people that don't, leave it out. Our next ingredient is black pepper. 
And this time you only need half of a teaspoon or to your tasting. All of this is to your tasting. You put in as much or as little as, as, as you like of something. Now our next ingredient is chili powder. Again, this is optional. If you don't like the heat of chili powder or the taste of it, you can leave it out. But we do like it, and I'm only using a quarter teaspoon, not very much. If you really like chili powder and you like the heat of it, you might want to do half a teaspoon. That's up to you. And then this is a vital ingredient. I know it seems a little strange, but this is cornstarch. Cornstarch helps to um, kind of crisp up the chicken coating, the, the outer outside of the chicken. Um, without the cornstarch, it just doesn't dry out as much, so it doesn't get as crisp. So I really think the cornstarch is very important. And I'm going to do two tablespoons of that. If you want to cut back on that just a little bit, you can, but I think two tablespoons is just about right. So two tablespoons cornstarch. Now, we have one more ingredient to put in, but before we do, it's a liquid, it's oil. So before we put it in, I'm going to seal this bag and mix all of these ingredients. You wanna make sure it's mixed up well. Get everything in there. You don't wanna see any ingredient in clumps by itself. Make sure those breadcrumbs are completely mixed in with all those spices. Make sure your salt and pepper and everything's mixed in there well. Now this amount of breading or coating is going to, for us today, it's going to do four pretty good sized chicken breasts, boneless, skinless chicken breast. Um, but I think I said earlier, this is so easy to make a big batch of. If you want to just get a big bowl and quadruple everything, you can use what you need for a meal and then the rest of it put in a glass jar in your refrigerator and you can take out what you need and use it as you want to cook with it. I would not put the oil in it if I was going to store it in the refrigerator. I would fix it to this point and then store it. Then when you take it out, put your oil in. Now for this amount, we're going to use a little less than a fourth of a cup. When you stir this in or mix this in, it's going to kind of turn that into a sandy type texture, but that liquid is going to help it stick to your chicken. So let's put that in. And now mix it up really well. And I did not use the full one fourth of a cup. So if I feel like it's not enough, if it's not wet enough, I'll put a little more in. But I like to start with a little less than a fourth because I don't want it too wet. I always add a little bit. Yeah. You know, take it out. That's right. It's always easier to add than take out. So. That looks pretty good. It's let's look at it. Get that oil off the side of that bag right there. I'm gonna just stick my hand in there and show you. Now you can see that's kind of like sand. You can see how it's kind of clumped up a little bit. It's a little moist. So that's what you want. I think a quarter of a cup is plenty. If you want to, you can start with a little less than that. I know people are very cautious about how much oil they use. So if you want to use a little less than a quarter of a cup, you can. Now, you also are going to need chicken. And today we have four boneless, skinless chicken breasts. These are really big pieces. They are large chicken breast. And you do want them to be a little moist when you put them in. You don't want it dripping wet, but you do want them moist. That just helps the coating stick to them. These are huge breasts, so I hope I have enough coating. I think I do. And you just want them to drip, get all the water from dripping off of them. 
and then put one in at a time. Seal your bag. For us, this is gonna be a quick one to keep twice now. That's right. I'm doing four chicken breasts and that will feed us twice. And I think I said before on here, I am a big believer in cook once, eat twice. Somebody who refused to eat leftovers would starve to death at our house. And you know, I really, I, I started doing that because when our kids were small and we were, they were involved in so much, like you know, basketball, soccer, gymnastics, whatever, it was hard to have time to get a meal of meat and vegetables on the table. So when I did get time to cook, I would cook enough for two or three meals. All right, can you get in there and see what that looks like with that coating on there? Now, when I finish with all four of these, if I have extra coating, I will just use it to sprinkle on top because once you've had raw meat in this coating, in this bag, you cannot save it. What you don't use has to go in the trash. You cannot save anything to use later that you've had raw meat in. So, I will just take whatever's left, if we have some left, and I think we will. And I will just sprinkle it on top. So there's plenty of coating. I'm trying to just massage this to get that coating down in all the nooks and crannies because we want everything covered with this. So you could do this in a bowl. Yeah, you could, bag. yeah. But if you do it in a bag like this, you just throw the bag away. Then you don't have to clean up. So, I like doing it in a bag. All right, there's our second piece. Let's go to our third. Now, I have got my... Um, oven preheated. Take that fat off there. I don't like that. I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. And once we put it in, put the chicken in, we will set the timer for 20 minutes and then check it. 20 minutes is usually long enough to cook it all the way through. Um, if you check it after 20 minutes and your oven maybe isn't as hot as ours or you feel like it needs a little more time, you can add five more minutes and check it again. If you want to check the internal temperature of it, it should be at about 160 degrees to be completely done all the way through. And, you know, once you take it out, you need to let it sit for a little while. Don't, don't take it out and cut it within a couple of minutes because those juices need to redistribute and kind of soak back into that meat. If you take it out of the oven and immediately cut it, um, you're gonna lose a lot of the juice. That is a huge chicken breast. Wow. So, and what I was going to say was, it, as it's resting, as those juices are redistributing, that chicken will continue to cook. So the temperature, the internal temperature, will continue to go up even after you take it out of the oven. So don't feel like you have to cook it until it's all the way to the correct internal temperature because if you do that, after you take it out, it's still going to continue to cook and then it'll be a little overcooked and it'll be dry and not very good. So you don't want dry, tough chicken. Nobody likes dry chicken, or I don't anyway. Okay, even though these are huge chicken pieces, we had plenty of coating. I want you to look how big that is. I'm gonna move this one over here and try to get this in here. Great day. These are huge. Okay, now, our chicken's all coated, but we have all this coating left. So I'm just gonna take some and sprinkle on top of it. The breading will kind of stick to it. 
especially with that little bit of sugar in there, as it melts, and sugar will melt in the oven, as it melts, it will help that breading to stick to your chicken. So don't be afraid to sprinkle a little extra on top of it. And let me say it one more time because I don't want anyone getting sick. Whatever breading you don't use, you have to throw away. It has had raw meat in it and you cannot save it for later. I have had people ask me that when I've done recipes before. You know, I had a lot of breading, a lot of coating left. Can I keep that in the refrigerator and use it in a night or two for another meal? Absolutely not. Do not do that. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands off real quick. Get some soap here. Since I've been handling raw chicken. And we will stick this in the oven. We'll start at 20 minutes and then we'll see if we think it's done. These are really big, thick pieces of chicken, so it may take a little longer than 20 minutes for these. But we'll see. What if you were doing bone-in chicken? Oh, that, if you're doing bone-in chicken, that changes everything. Um, bone-in chicken breasts take at least 40, 45 minutes. So if you're, if you're doing boneless, boneless, skinless, 20 to 25 minutes. If you're doing bone-in, it, you're going to need at least 40 to 45 minutes and you will need to check the internal temperature a bit. So could you do a whole chicken? Yeah, yeah, you could. I mean, I've done this with um, chicken legs. I've done it with thighs. So yeah, you can use any chicken part. We just happened to have four boneless, skinless chicken breasts that I had vacuum sealed and frozen before we left on a vacation. And I thought we need to get those out and use them. So I followed them out this morning and that's why we're using these. But yes, you can use any piece of chicken. It doesn't matter. All right, in we go. And let me set this for 20 minutes. And we will be back as soon as those are done and let you see what they look like. We'll be back soon. These are extraordinarily large chicken breasts, just like I mentioned before. And so they took about 25 minutes to come to the right temperature. I did check them at 20 minutes. They were about 151, 152 internal, and I needed them to come to almost 165. So I added five more minutes and they were at 162 degrees internal temperature. And like I said, if you take them out and let them sit for five minutes or so, they will continue to cook and they will go up another two, three, four, sometimes even five degrees. So I took them out when they were at 162 and they should be plenty done. They have been out of the oven for about five minutes or maybe a little more than that to allow the juices to redistribute. So they should be ready for us to eat. Let me also tell you that, I don't think I mentioned this before, but if you're doing chicken legs or chicken thighs with the bone in, they should come to about 170 degrees internal temperature. So chicken breasts are 160 to 165, chicken legs, chicken thighs are 170. All right, let's make a plate. I'm hungry and I'm ready to eat. So let's take this off. You want me to make you a plate? Sure. Okay. I'm hungry, I've been thinking about this all afternoon. All right, so there's our chicken. And to go with the chicken, I have fixed, I have fried some little whole potatoes. Now, you can buy new potatoes, and that's what these are called, new potatoes. Um, you can buy them canned at the store, and I think that's what they're called in the store, new potatoes. Or you can raise them in a garden and can them, which is what we used to always do, but we haven't had a garden the last couple of years. Ooh, that's hot, I'm gonna have to get a dish towel. So, um, but we, we always get new potatoes. If we don't raise them ourselves in a garden, we buy them from a local farmer at our farmer's market. 
and then we can our own. They are very easy to can, and we know exactly what's in them. Just like Melissa was talking about the coating for the um, chicken. You know what's in it, so it's best to do your own, but not everyone can do that. And if you can't, just buy you some new potatoes at the store, canned new potatoes. Um, and I, I promise you they're delicious. All I did was melt some butter in my skillet. I forgot to give you some potatoes. All I did was melt some butter in my skillet, put my new potatoes in. How many potatoes you want? Uh, two or three. Oh, I've already given you four. There's a little one. You might want it. Um, I just melted some butter in my skillet and put my new potatoes in and salt and butter, uh, salt and peppered them and let them fry on one side. When they were kind of browned on one side, I flipped them each over, salt and peppered the other side, let them continue to fry in that butter. And they're delicious. They're ready in no time. These green beans are the ones that we did in our last video and they're leftovers from our dinner a couple of nights ago. So it's a quick, easy meal. All right, let's take a bite. Yum. Hopefully since it's been resting for a few minutes, it won't be too hot. Oh, look at that, perfectly done. Yum. Oh, I see steam coming off of it though. And the coating is sticking to it really well. Perfect. While he's chewing, I'm gonna say, don't forget that I will put the recipe at the bottom in the comments. <laughs> That's right, I forgot to say that on the last video or two. Melissa always puts the recipe in, in the, description. the in the description box. I think I said comments, I meant description. Yeah, it's in the description box right below the video. If you click where the title of the video is, that box will expand and she'll have the recipe there. Also, we would appreciate if you would click the thumbs up right under the video. And on the other side, click subscribe and the notification bell if you've not already done that. And share our video. We appreciate when you share it and we get new subscribers. We've gotten several new subscribers in the last couple of weeks. So that's really exciting for us. It's fun to pull up our channel and see that we have new subscribers. So if you'll help share the word for us, that will help us build our channel. All right, thank you so much for watching our videos. We always appreciate the kind comments and we have gotten so many. Melissa enjoys reading those to me and I enjoy hearing them. Remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day. Eat some chicken.